we're talking about methodology and strategy for mission, especially in regards to learning from Paul's model, Paul's example in the New Testament. It might be helpful to stop briefly and talk about some terminologies uh, to make a little bit of a distinction. I think there's overlap, but perhaps to make a little bit of distinction uh, between things like tools and methods and strategy and paradigm. I, I remember uh, one of my college buddies uh, saying to me, he said, hey, Don, Don, I want to talk to you. Uh, I, I'm working, you know, I want Linda to like me. I'm trying to win her over. So let me tell, talk to you about my strategy. And I uh, you know, not really used the word strategy a lot, I think, at that point. I was sort of struck. I said, okay, your strategy. And I'm thinking, brother, you're going to need something. So I hope this strategy is a good one <laughs> if you're going to win that girl over. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of confusion uh, and so I, I, with, with these terminologies. So let me just walk through this a little bit and why I think it's helpful. Um, sometimes we'll hear people say, I have a strategy. And what they actually are saying is they have a tool. And, and in fact, I know there are numerous uh, occasions where uh, someone has um, criticized a missionary's team's strategy when all they know about that strategy is one tool. And it's a much bigger and deeper and, and wonderful, broader strategy. Um, but, you know, missionaries don't often publish all that and put it out to everybody. And so they saw one tool, just one tool, a much bigger picture. And now they thought, well, that's the strategy and they don't like it. So then they start uh, criticizing the missionary. So I think it's good to think through what are the appropriate uses of terms. What word best describes how Paul did his work as a missionary? And uh, in my readings of multiple, multiple books, I can't even count the books, maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 books on Paul's mission. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a nut, I'm a nerd. Uh, I've run across a lot of good words um, that, but that were favorites of different authors. Uh, so again, we've already been introduced to Roland Allen and he talks about Paul's missionary method, methodology. And that's, that's a good word. And I think in some ways that's actually what Roland Allen is actually talking mostly about. He gets a little bit broader than method, but uh, he certainly talking about a method. Uh, one of my favorite writers uh, when I was a new missionary, David Hesselgrave, uh, wrote a, a book about Paul's cycle of church planting, uh, planting churches cross-culturally. Wonderful book, and I use it as a guide. Oh my goodness, I use it a lot. That, that first uh, seven or eight years on the field. And he uh, has, has made it into a cycle uh, and, and shows that Paul's doing these same things over and over as he goes to different places. So that's a really interesting way, uh, I think, to look at it and, and quite meaningful. And, and then we get to Schnabel, Eckerd Schnabel, that, um, that I've talked about some, uh, a, a wonderful writer and author and scholar uh, about Paul, and he uses the word strategy. Uh, and I think, yeah, the way that uh, Schnabel includes a lot of things, he, he really does uh, focus on uh, the broader strategy. Uh, and then a, a really influential writer, uh, mostly a generation ago now, uh, David Bosch, um, talked about paradigms of missions, how at different eras in mission history, there have been completely different paradigms. And a paradigm would include the strategy, but it's also sort of the worldview, all the assumptions, the cultural assumptions, uh, a much bigger picture. Uh, but again, he uh, would see this as paradigm. Actually, in, in these videos that we're talking through, we're, we're probably sort of gonna do all four of those, we're going to talk about method, and, and certainly there is a cycle uh, I, I, that I think is helpful. Uh, Strategy is important. Um, and then, yeah, I think there is a Pauline paradigm, which includes 
more than just his methodology, but his theology and his character and so many other things. And we want to talk a little bit about those things too. So what's the difference between all of these different things? Let me, let me just mention, uh, I think, some, some helpful words here. Tool. I'm going to use the term tool, and I hope I can be, uh, you know, pretty consistent with you about it. I see a tool as a specific instrument used to accomplish a particular outcome. Now, let me, let me give you an example of that. It, it's not actually Pauline. Well, it is sort of Pauline, the Roman road method of sharing the gospel. Um, m many of you would know that just simply taking verses, uh, going through, walking through the book of Romans, uh, that are a beautiful explanation of the gospel. Uh, I, I've, I found that even cross-culturally this works, not if I preach this to somebody, but I ask them to read it and tell me what it says. Um, and I've seen, oh my goodness, uh, numerous people from other faiths read it and be surprised because God's speaking to them so directly from these words in the book of Romans. Uh, that's a tool. It's not a whole strategy. It's not a paradigm. It's none of those kinds of things. It's a tool, and it's a very good tool. So, in, in, look, missionaries need tools. They should have probably several of them. A, a common tool that's used today in contemporary missions uh, is sometimes referred as C2C, the creation to Christ presentation that basically covers Genesis to Revelation. It might be five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, or two hours of showing people how the whole story fits together. That is a great tool and, and the kind of thing that we would want to use. I think Paul had tools. And then we could say there are methods that's bigger than a tool. Um, in, in the military, we might say this is tactics. It's the practical means of achieving an end. For Paul, I would say an example of this would be uh, preaching in the synagogue. He knew that if he walked into a synagogue and they hadn't already heard about him, which I think later in his ministry became a problem, not early, they found out who he was because they were asking ask him, who are you, you know, oh, you lived in Jerusalem, did you, you know, what, where did you study? And he, he tells them, they, they immediately ask him. They hand him a scroll and say, please teach us, Rabbi. And uh, that is a tremendous method for Paul to get started preaching to a group of people who should be prepared to hear about this Jewish Messiah. Um, now, I, I've never used that particular method because it doesn't fit me and it hasn't really fit very well most of the ministry context that I've been involved in. Uh, not that many Jews in most of them. Um, but a method that, might, that we might talk about today that's very common around the world among missionaries is just simply storying. That is taking Bible stories and explaining who God is, explaining especially who Jesus is, a very powerful way as opposed to, you know, sort of in contrast to our traditional Protestant outline sermon storying fits better with oral learners. It's easier for people to understand and remember, even if they don't understand all of the background yet. Uh, a tremendous method, and certainly if you're in missions or interested in missions, it's one you ought to be uh, checking out and, and probably developing. Uh, now, strategy is bigger than a tool and it's bigger than methods. This is the broad plan that identifies a goal and the resources needed to reach it. Um, this is like in, in Paul's life, choosing strategic cities to plant churches. This is pretty big. This is the big picture. This is the big map. This is what happens over a longer period of time. Um, it includes probably some tools and it includes multiple methods probably um, but it's bigger than that. And, you know, this word actually comes from the Greek for the word general, uh, a strategos. He's the guy that's looking at the whole army. 
he's not down in the trench, you know, fighting with five of his friends. That would be more like tactics. But he's trying to figure out where does the, where does the army need to be? Uh, do we attack? Do we defend? All th those are the big strategy issues. And uh, so that's actually what that's talking about. And then we can use uh, that, that uh, word that David Bosch used in, in his uh, wonderful work, paradigm. This is bigger than even the strategy. It certainly would include the strategy, but it's actually broader than that. It, it includes the way of thinking and acting. It includes assumptions, concepts, methods. I think when I'm talking about Paul, if I talked about his paradigm, I would probably want to see that in terms of his call, his methods, his objectives, his theology, uh, which again includes this whole Old Testament background and his study of it, and how he's been transformed for, by Christ. All of that's part of his worldview, and so I would say that's all a part of the paradigm. That's broader than strategy, it includes theology and character and a lot of other things. Strategy is broader in methods, which is a practical means of accomplishing something. And then it, the simplest thing is getting back to a tool. Now that doesn't mean that a tool is not critical to success. Most missionaries are using tools, maybe several, they may not even be aware of it. Uh, what, what kind of Bible study tool do you use? What kind of witnessing tool do you use? Uh, without tools, most of us stumble a little bit, even with uh, some of the simpler tasks. Um, so all of these are important, but those are the kinds of um, distinctions that at least in my mind I'm trying to make as we talk in this broader sense about uh, mission strategy and Paul. Um, and I think we can learn a lot from Paul's methods. Um, Paul, for instance, talked several times about three tasks or roles that he was working to accomplish. Uh, and each is a, a method, in a sense, worthy of our study. They're all part of his strategy, but he could divide it out into three pieces. And this comes out again in his writings. One is, Paul says, I'm a proclaimer. I am proclaiming the good, ne the good news of Jesus. So how was Paul communicating the good news about Jesus? And I think that's a really one of the most important things uh, about Paul's ministry that we can learn so much from. He also, Paul says, I'm a teacher. Uh, and, and how, you know, just, just pick up on the Great Commission. Jesus says, you know, teaching these people to obey. Um, how was Paul discipling those who believed the gospel that he was proclaiming? And he divides that out as a slightly different far part of his ministry. And then he says, I'm an apostle. And I think in Paul's terminology, we see several places where he tied the word apostle is not just an evangelist, and I think it's more than a discipler, here he's talking about we are pioneer planting new churches um, in places where there aren't churches. And so Paul is saying evangelism at the, is at the heart. And, and it's not just my sharing the gospel with one or two people in the city. It is getting it out to as many people as possible in that area. And then teaching those who believe and then gathering them and developing them into a church. That's a really good way of looking at Paul's ministry in the bigger picture. These are some of the core tasks and that work that, we, that we've seen that God is calling Paul to do. So where does this word strategy come from? Well, it actually has military roots. Uh, and Miriam Webster uh, defines it as the science and art of military command exercised to meet the enemy in combat under advantageous conditions. That's why you want a strategy. You don't want to just bump into them unprepared. You want to be in the best possible position. 
Uh, you want your troops to be rested if possible. You want to have plenty of food. You want to have a way of escape if you need it. All those kinds of things are part of the strategy. It can include all the resources of the nation as well as the military. So the general is not just about, oh, well, I've got, you know, 3,000 troops. The general is about, okay, how do we feed them? How do we take care of them? Where are they coming from? Uh, are they going to likely be sick at this time? All those kinds of things are part of strategic thinking. Now, in reality, now in English, uh, we use this word many, many, many times uh, in other fields besides military, uh, even though that's where it originally came from. Uh, people have political strategies. Uh, people develop business strategies. They are military strategies. And some of us use the term in regard to a mission plan. Jesus called us to take the gospel to all peoples and how are we going to do that? We really do need to do uh, some planning and have a big picture about how this is going on. And um, so all of that is very helpful. Um, you know, Sun Tzu, uh, a Chinese scholar who wrote The Art of War thousands of years ago, uh, is, is recognized as one of the greatest strategists in history. Uh, most military academies probably study a little bit from The Art of War. And I want you to just, just listen to this. I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert on Sun Tzu, but uh, when I read this, I'm just amazed at how insightful. Thinking way ahead, uh, not just the immediate response, you know, oh, see the enemy, let's kill them all or whatever. No, Sun Tzu is training his commanders to think strategically. And here's what he says. The highest realization of warfare is to attack the enemy's plans next to attack their alliances, next to attack their army, and the lowest to attack their fortified cities. Thus one who excels at employing the military subjugates other people's armies without engaging in battle, captures other people's fortified cities without attacking them, and destroys other people's states without prolonged fighting. He must fight under heaven with the paramount aim of preservation. That's because you don't want to destroy all that. You want to pull it into your side. Thus his weapons will not become dull and the gains will be preserved. This is the strategy for planning offensives. Now, many military leaders in history did not think this way. And we know there, are, there were destructive armies and leaders in numerous times through history who basically swept through an area and wiped out everything. Uh, Sun Tzu says, do just the opposite. Preserve everything that you can. And then if you can get them to come over to your side, all of that wealth, all of those people, all of those cities are now a part of you and strengthen who you are. That's brilliant. That strategy.